What's up guys, Armada here, and in today's video we are gonna talk about learning how to learn. A lot of times I get questions, how do I improve the fastest and stuff like that, and very recently I was at the Alliance office and they actually had a presentation for the Dota team on this topic, and I ended up sitting there listening to it and I could just look back at, you know, my own career, all the things I've done, uh, and I could really see like how much I've applied these things. Uh, I basically taught myself these things and the thing is the concept is not too complicated at all but I feel like a lot of uh, pieces people might not really think about enough or know about. So we're gonna go over these four, uh, four steps in this video. We're also gonna go over uh, what I call uh, the illusion of learning that I think a lot of smashers have been falling for. I know I myself fell for it in the past so Sit down and enjoy the ride. The first step in learning how to learn is obviously practice. Practice, playing. Uh, this could be playing against people. This could be playing uh, on your own, uh, getting all the tech skill down, etc. etc. This is uh, probably the most common thing that people do when they try to learn something. They're focusing on like doing, you know, pretty much the same thing over and over. Uh, playing endless friendlies, stuff like that. So that's gonna be the number one thing uh, that is very important if you wanna get good at something, spend the hours putting in the work. The second step is gonna be to study matches when it comes to Smash then for example, going over footage. This is like a huge advantage we have uh, as Smashers, especially in this time and age. We can go over footage very often. Everyone might not have the same chances of you know having as much stuff recorded but if you do then you for sure should take advantage of this and if you don't really have the chance too often then at least try to increase the times you can get your uh, stuff recorded so this is going to be a very important one as well sitting down going over the matches i think one reason that this one is not made enough is that partly people probably don't understand the importance of actually going over your own matches to see what flaws you're doing what you could be doing Doing better and so on so this one really really important and it might not be the most fun thing to do I know for myself studying matches was my least favorite thing pretty much within smash but a very very important point so this one also also is gonna be very necessary for our four way step of learning how to learn Step number three is gonna go a little bit further than just looking at the matches, but it's also gonna be trying to thinking about solutions for what you could do instead. A lot of times you can very often see in matches that people, they keep falling for the same thing over and over and over again. And the reason that a lot of these things have not been corrected by players is because they just keep going for the practice, the first step in learning how to learn, is that they keep playing friendlies over and over, they don't really pay attention to the details, they don't go to step two of looking over their matches, so they kind of miss a lot of, you know, crucial points in learning how to learn, that they they just keep playing, they keep playing, they keep playing, and they do not reflect over the fact of like, what mistakes are am I doing? So they keep falling for the same things over and over. And since they are not looking at the things that they are doing wrong over and over, they are also not thinking of solutions of how to overcome these issues. When I do study matches, even at the highest, highest level, you can very often see patterns. It doesn't matter how much commentators are trying to say that this player is 100% unpredictable, stuff like that. Every human being is not unpredictable to that degree. We all, all players have our own habits, our own flaws, and it's always, always another step upwards to go. So yeah, as we have said, playing the game, study the game, and thinking about things you can do differently is very, very important. Then some people might be thinking like, oh, but I don't know what I should be doing instead. I did play and I did reflect, but I'm not really sure what I can do instead. And that's a fair point. That's a fair point. For me personally, back in the day, what I did a lot, because I didn't really have uh, many other people to look up to, what I was doing myself was a lot of testing things. If I was like, oh, I'm losing to this move over and over again, I was like, all right, I do not know the answer to this situation. So I'm testing things out. I'm testing to see, does this work? 
does this work? No, it didn't. And even if it didn't work, I still learned an important lesson, right? Because now I know whatever I tried doing, it didn't work in this scenario. So I'm still one experience richer and then I'm still trying to search for the answer, right? But especially in this time and age, let's say you're playing Fox and you are having a hard time dealing with, let's say, Sheik's F tilt and melee, uh, you can look up so many foxes and see how do they handle these situations and then you can take inspiration from that so that's also a way of doing it so even if you don't know the answer you can try to find the answer by another top player doing it or by testing things out yourself and see what works best for you and the final step is going to be obviously to apply these things it doesn't really matter if you play, study, and think about it, if you also don't apply the things that you came up with. So that's gonna be the final step in learning how to learn. You need to apply all the things that you have theorized, studied up, practiced, and so on. Because it doesn't really matter if you know what to do, if you're not actually doing it in matches. So that's gonna be very important. For me personally, if I did, do the three first steps and I had a hard time to implement the things that I came up with then I always while playing friendlies try to remind myself if a scenario came up I was like oh I forgot about this and I you know I consciously think about the fact that I forgot to do it and of course a big issue here could be that you try to overdo it to apply it at all times even in scenarios where it doesn't even make sense I can make a, a pretty funny reference for uh, for me back in, uh, it must have been 2005, my first year of competing in Melee, and I was like 12 at the time, and I was pretty well known for doing Wave Dash back F Smash. I think this probably was the fact that I tried to overdo something, uh, like I wanted to apply Wave Dash, I had seen uh, pro players do it, and I wanted to do it myself, but instead of like trying to learn exactly when to apply it, I tried to over apply it, where I did it so much, kinda probably because showing people that, you know, I know how to do this. And I think this is a very, very common concept. And I've experienced this against many, many players. Uh, one example on this could be if you play against an opponent and they mess up something, uh, I'll use another melee example here. If I play the Sheik and I did down throw and the jab and the Captain Falcon missed their jab reset, then I knew when I re-grab and throw down again that almost every Falcon that I played against, they would miss tech again on purpose just to show that they could smash the eye, uh, the jab reset. And then I always got an up smash. This was like at least 95% of the time. So that could also maybe be, you know, like unconsciously that people want to show that, you know, I can do this. I should not have messed that up. Uh, so also like human um, psychology can be very important for decision making in, uh, in the games. Now, with all these four steps, if you try to remove even a single one of them, your learning process will suffer a lot. So I think right here, it's very important to recognize which ones are you doing and which ones are you not doing or not doing enough at the very least. Because if we remove experience, for example, then it's not really gonna matter how much you watch matches, think about solutions and apply solutions if you don't practice enough. And the same thing if we, for example, remove applying, then it doesn't matter if you're playing 10 hours a day and you are watching matches and thinking about solutions if you never actually apply anything that you try to learn from, right? So all of these four steps will be incredibly, incredibly important to focus on. And I feel like a lot of Smashers, they, and not even only Smashers, like humans overall, they don't really know or understand the importance of all these four steps and their improvement ratios sadly suffers a lot from it. And some people might ask like, but if, if someone wants to improve, why are they just not doing these four things? And I have some theories for it. And one of them is pure laziness. Uh, it's always easier to blame someone or something else for your shortcomings. Uh, whether it's that someone have more talent than you have, or whether they live in a better region, or that you are too busy with real life stuff. 
Uh, so often uh, laziness can be uh, a huge thing and you know coming up with excuses and stuff like that it's very important here to let go of your ego uh, it's very important to be honest with yourself because a huge part of improving as well is being honest with what you are doing wrong what you could be doing better because a lot of people they want to hear all the good stuff they're doing but in order to improve it's even more important i would say to be honest with the things you are doing bad i am not good enough at this matchup and i'm not doing this specific thing good enough in this matchup or i'm not working as hard as this person is doing so that's very very important and of course it might sound like that's demoralizing at times but i think the results you are getting out of being more honest with yourself is well worth it and it makes it much more fun on the ride i would say and the next thing i would say i'm not sure if a term exists for this but i will call it the illusion of how to improve and by this i mean that a lot of people when they do start playing smash them for example whether it's melee ultimate or whatever it is they're doing uh, i would say that they kind of get tricked into an illusion of how they improve and by this i mean and this also applies to myself and i think this is part of the reason or the biggest reason i didn't really improve much during my first two years and that's the fact that i think the experience slash practice segment of learn how to learn is so pushed and you get so rewarded by only doing one of these steps and by this i mean that if you pick a main character and you stick with that character for a while you will naturally get quite a bit better at the game because you, you are new to the game, right? So you will get a little bit better at doing combos, recover, escape options, and stuff like that. So you will improve quite a bit by not really reflecting about the game, thinking about solutions, or applying solutions, really. Uh, the, the apply part uh, is a little bit here, but the, the reflecting and thinking part is not concepts that you even need to use at the very start to improve like you would improve faster i would say but you will still improve without using these steps along the way and the applying thing especially if you play a very technical game like melee applying l cancel for example will improve you as a player because without it well you're simply going to be much worse and many things are going to be unsafe and so on so especially the experience but partly also the applying part you can get away with that for quite a long time and keep improving and keep improving until you don't and that's the issue a lot of people they are like oh i have plateaued why have i plateaued why am i not improving any longer i did improve for a year but now i'm stuck and the reason is in my opinion for most of these people that they they start plateauing because the experience and applying is finally getting to a point where these two things alone can't help you improve that much any longer at the very least not at a fast ratio and that's when it becomes important to reflect and think about the things you are doing as well and that's also where the honesty comes in you need to be honest with the things you are doing wrong you need to come up with solutions for how you can get better and then apply it and then your practice will get better but when you do skip the reflecting and thinking, thinking factor in this, then it's going to be incredibly hard. And some people might be a little bit better at reflecting on these things while playing. That clearly exists. But at the very least, I would encourage people to try to follow this four-step method in terms of improving. Because I think it would help you guys a lot. And another thing I want to talk about is that this is, if you want to apply this to Smash, it's not only about the way you play. You can also apply this to your mental game, for example. Uh, because a lot of people, they have visibly very, very poor mental games when they're playing. They get very visibly frustrated. Uh, they start losing focus. They get frustrated and... Of course, certain actions within the game becomes more common if you're frustrated, impatient, and stuff like that. So that's another area where it's very important to be honest with yourself. So you can experience, you know, like test your mental game in matches, but then you also need to reflect on your mental game, 
think of like how can I become a more mentally strong player and then try to apply it. Uh, of course, people can have like different different issues in terms of mental game. Uh, so they might have like different stuff they need to apply to become better. Uh, but it's very, very important here as well to be honest with yourself. Where is your shortcomings? What can you do to become better? For me, for example, I will use uh, an example uh, at Beast 5, which is a pretty, pretty well-known uh, situation in our scene. I was playing as Leffen. I was down 2-1. I was... Uh, I was very, very tired while playing, I remember. I was very, uh, I was uh, quite, you know, I was not focused enough. I was not focused enough. I had partly been helping running this tournament for the entire weekend. And I felt like it didn't play to the best of my abilities. And what I did was that I was, you know, I was thinking over the situation. Like I had experience in these three first matches of the set. Then I reflected on what I was doing wrong. And I realized that I needed to calm myself down and I needed to pump myself up because I didn't feel like I had enough energy, right? I didn't feel hungry enough in the moment. So what I did do, what I did apply was that first I was closing my eyes, I was breathing, calming myself down. And after that, I was trying to visualize myself standing on stage, winning the set, winning the tournament. And that alone gave me a lot of energy. Uh, and then I went into the next match. And then I tried to apply all of this, obviously. And the next match went very well. I didn't win the tournament in the end. But that could still be an example of like how you can uh, also work on your mental game. Uh, applying the learn how to learn uh, circle. Alright guys. That's gonna be it for today's video. I really, really hope that you guys found this video useful. I would love to hear what you guys think about this concept and let me know if you guys uh, will test this out. And if you do test it out, then please let me know in the future if you feel like this helped you out. Uh, I know it did help me a lot. And honestly speaking, I wish someone taught me this when I started going to tournaments in 05. Uh, I kind of learned it on my own in 07, and that's when I saw an improvement from barely top 10 Sweden to top 5 Europe in a few months. I know that the competitive landscape in both Melee and Ultimate is much rougher than uh, it was back in 2007, but if I, I feel like if I could improve that much in such a short time, then I feel like many people most likely could uh, gain a lot by using this method so since a lot of people have asked how do i learn how to learn this is the video this is armada i hope you enjoyed it and please make sure to press that subscribe button if you enjoyed the video and i will see you all in the next one peace